Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com slash free. The Query Design View gives you power and flexibility in designing your queries. Although it isn't the only way to make them initially, you will have to learn how to use Query Design View at some point as you grow in your access skill set. In Query Design View, the tables from which you extract data are placed into the top section of the Design View. You then add the fields from these tables that you would like to view in your query results into the bottom grid section, which is called the QBE, or Query by Example Grid. Now, if you wanted to add all of the fields from a query table into your query's result set, note that you can just click and drag the first field shown in the table diagram, which shows an asterisk, down into the QBE grid. That would then add all of the fields from that table to the result set of the query. Now, once your fields are in place, you then add any criteria and set any sorting options as needed to the QBE grid to filter and sort just the data that you would like to see in the query results. Now to create a new query in Query Design View, just click the Query Design button that appears in the other group on the Create tab in the ribbon in order to create a new query in Query Design. Just as with the Relationships window which you used earlier, here you will have to add the table or tables that you need for the query into the Query Design View. You simply select the names of the tables that you wish to add and then click the Add button to add them into the actual query. When you're finished, click the Close button in the Show Table dialog box. Also ensure that you only select the tables that you absolutely need in order to run the query. Adding additional tables, which you will not use, forces the query to access these tables whenever it's run, slowing it down pointlessly. It can also produce unexpected and sometimes erroneous results. So as you add the necessary tables to your query, the joins which you created between the tables in your Relationships window will automatically be displayed. Now make sure that you've added all of the necessary tables to your query. So for example, assume that you had two tables from which you needed to extract data, a customer's table and an employee's table. However, also assume that those two tables do not share a direct join between them. So in order for the query results to make any sense whatsoever, you would also have to add the table that is used to associate the two tables as well. So assume that the employee's table is related to the customer's table through the sales table. In this case, you would also have to add the sales table to the query, even if you had no intention of displaying any data from that particular table. It's just needed in order to relate the two tables from which you do want to extract data. If you add two tables that are not joined to each other in any way, the query result will often produce a Cartesian product where every value in every row of one table is multiplied by the value in every row of the second table. You'll usually notice when this happens, as you'll probably have several hundred, if not thousand, more records in your query result set than you do data records in either table. Now, once you've added the necessary tables to the query, you can click the Close button in the Show Table dialog box to close it and display the query design view beneath it. You should see the tables that you added, shown as small table diagrams, at the top of the query design view. Now, if you forgot to add a table and you need to add it to the query, you can click the Show Table button in the Query Setup group on the Design tab of the Query Tools Contextual tab within the ribbon in order to bring up the Show Table dialog box again. If you accidentally added a table which you do not need, you can right-click on the table diagram that you don't want and then just select the Remove Table choice from the pop-up menu that appears to remove the table from the query. Next, you'll need to add the fields that you would like to show in the Query result set from the tables into the grid at the bottom of the Query Design view. So to do this, you can click and drag the name of the field that you want to display from the tables and drop them into the columns at the bottom of the Design grid. You may also just double-click on the name of a field shown in the table to add it to the Design grid as well. There are actually quite a few ways that you can add the fields to the table in the grid area below. Now note that the order in which the fields are listed in the grid is the order in which those fields will be displayed in the query result set. Now before you can remove a field which you accidentally added to the grid or reorganize the order of the fields in the grid, 
you must first select the column to delete or move in the result set. So to do this, place your mouse pointer slightly above the column that you would like to delete or move until you see a small downward pointing black arrow. Click once to select the field. To delete it at that point, you can simply press delete on your keyboard. To move it, just put your white mouse arrow into the very top of the selected column and then click and drag the selected column to the left or to the right. And as you drag it, you will see a thick black line appear between the columns over which you drag your mouse. This line represents where the column will be inserted when you release your mouse. Now most often, after you've added the query fields that you would like to view into the QBE grid, you then add your sorting and filtering criteria to your query. However, if you do not wish to restrict the data that is displayed, then you can simply run the query at this point. To run a query and view the result set, you can click the Run button in the Results group on the Design tab in the Query Tools Contextual tab within the ribbon to view the query's result set. Now the result set looks like a table does when viewed in Datasheet View. However, a query result set is not, by default, a base table in the same way that your other database tables are. The table view that is produced when you run a query disappears as soon as you close the query. A query is truly a definition of what data should be retrieved and displayed from the tables. Therefore, a query always shows the most up-to-date data each time that you run it. Now you can switch the query back to the query design view after you've run the query by clicking the view button in the view group on the home tab of the ribbon. If you click the view drop down arrow then just choose the design view choice from the drop down menu. Now either way once you're ready to save your query just click the save button in the quick access toolbar. You can then type a name for your query into the dialog box which appears and click OK to save the query. You can then close your query without losing all of your query design work. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com/free.